Super Mario 3D All-Stars is a collection of some of the best and most well-known Mario games that exist today, re-released on the Nintendo Switch. Included in the collection is Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. If you're wondering why Galaxy 2 wasn't included in the collection, here's a very real and definitely legitimate look into the decision-making process Nintendo made when making the collection. The 3D All-Stars collection was originally announced on September 3rd during the 35th anniversary of Mario Nintendo Direct. While I was watching that Direct, a crazy idea formed in my head. What if someone attempted to beat all three games 100% in one sitting? What if I attempted to beat all three games 100% in one sitting? You see, I've actually been in the speedrunning scene since 2014 and actually had experience speedrunning all three of these games to some degree, so should be no problem, right? Well, not so much. My last submitted speedrun of any sort was in January of 2018, so over two and a half years ago. Because of this, there was bound to be quite a bit of rust, both in technical execution and game knowledge. However, I was confident that once I picked up the controller, muscle memory would take over and we would have no problems. So with that, my mind was made up and the stage was officially set. After a few eager weeks of waiting, the game finally came out, and it was time for the show. This is how it all went down. It's me, Mario! Three, two, one, okay. go! Woo! Gaming! Alright, Chad, it's time for the gauntlet. Wait, no it's not. It is, but it's not. Actually, you know what? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Undo it, undo it. Undo it. We gotta go again. We gotta go again. Hold up, hold up. All right, now let's do the countdown for real this time. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh, uh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, didn't do it. I messed up the timer again, dude. Hold up, hold up. We gotta be official. Okay, the Guinness Book of World Records, they would not approve of this run. Okay, actually real for real. Let's go for real. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Okay, I didn't mess it up. Woo, now we're actually gaming. After literally three attempts of trying to get my timer to work correctly, we were off to the races. Super Mario 64 has always been a staple in the speedrunning scene, and I was more than excited to get my feet wet with the game again. However, I was barely one minute and a failed Lakitu skip into the run before I was hit with the first instance of what soon proved itself to be a bigger problem than originally anticipated. The camera. Yeah, no, okay, so word on the street is they inverted the camera in this game and in Sunshine and also in Galaxy, and if they did that, I am screwed. Oh, yeah, they inverted it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, why is this such a big deal? In order to fully understand the issue at hand, we first have to take a step back and look at the original games in the 3D All-Stars collection. In the original versions of Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine, the camera controls were actually inverted. This means that if you wanted to adjust the camera to the left, you would actually have to move the stick or hit the associated C button to the right, which is the opposite of most games out there today, including Nintendo's own Super Mario Odyssey. And what I can only assume to be a move made by Nintendo to improve the player experience in 2020, they've undone that change making it so the camera instead moves in the direction you press, with no toggleable option to change it back to its original state. While this doesn't affect the experience for the majority of players, this minor change works against the hundreds of hours of muscle memory myself and many other speedrunners of these original 3D Mario games had developed. Knowing this, I knew the only real option for me moving forward with this run was to stop it before it had a chance to get going in the first place. So I quit. Okay, okay, I didn't quit, but I was discouraged and admittedly a bit frightened. This minor change was bound to have major repercussions for even a tip-top speedrunner, and I had over two years of rust working against me. However, we were so early on in the run that I was feeling optimistic, and I thought, hey, it would make a pretty sick YouTube video if I could power through and finish this thing, so we continued. For a while, the run went without too many hitches. I remembered all the routes, and I even got some of the more well-known tricks. Sure. 
Sure, good enough. First try. We still got it. <laughs> oh, oh, do we still got the tech? Do we still got the tech? Oh, tech acquired. Let's go. Dude, if, if, if there was a way to invert the controls, it'd be over for you. It'd be over for you guys. Wait. Oh, God. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Oh, it did work! Let's go! I'm a legend! <laughs> we'll take it! Got it! We'll take it! Things were going well. Maybe it was taking me a few more tries than I would have liked on some strats, but uh, we were making steady progress, so things were good. Unfortunately, everything changed when I hit my least favorite stage in the game, Shifting Sandland. To put it simply, Shifting Sandland was an absolute disaster, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. I mean, just watch my first attempt at trying to get a star in this level. So if you're used to like... Okay, good start. <laughs> Oh, you want another example? Here, how about this? I think these clips of me trying to recall the 100 coin route sum it up pretty well. Wait, what am I doing? What am I doing, dude? I'm freaking out! I don't- I don't know if I remember- <laughs> I don't remember if I, I remember all the strats for this, to be honest. I'm kind of having an episode right now. <laughs> if we're being- if we're being honest with one another, I'm definitely- I don't- <laughs> I forgot what I'm doing. This is the part where I get- I get lost in the- in the sauce, dude. Oh, th this was the strat. I knew I was forgetting something, dude. Yeah, yeah, okay. And- okay, well that's actually literally the worst possible scenario there, so that's really bad. <laughs> I gotta go all the way back up there, cause I need to be up there. Uh, you know what? It's okay, just another blip in the plan. We're just gonna be doing it a little out of order, you know? It's fine. Oh yeah, definitely. This is definitely all part of the route. <laughs> 100%. Wait, is this how you're supposed to do this crap casually? This is awful. I would not wish this upon anyone. <laughs> oh, don't go in there! That's bad! We don't want to go in there! <laughs> Giving everyone a dang heart attack, man. Jesus. Let's not go in there, that would be bad. Let's instead come over here and win. How about that? Hey, winning in the game. All right, all right, we made it through even though it was not great. After the disaster of a level that Shifting Sandland was, a few more warning bells went off in my head. I thought to myself, if I was struggling this early on, how was I ever supposed to make it through not only the rest of this game, but two longer ones afterwards? Okay, no, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Maybe this wasn't such a great idea after all. Fortunately, the rest of the run went fairly well, all things considered. There were a few minor blips here and there as I fought against my new enemy, the camera, but by and large, we steadily progressed through the remainder of the game rather quickly, even pulling off a few crazy stunts through years of rust that surprised even me. All right, are you guys ready for penguin strats? Speed tech? Oh, wait, 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 here we go. Can I do this? Speed strats, let's go, we'll take it. Hey, first try, we did it. And then you do a little side flip, boom. Oh, one sec. And then, boom, there it is. Oh, camera! Okay, saved, saved. Alright. Oh, first try, cruiser! We still got it, ladies and gentlemen! It's like riding a bike! Like past me said, Super Mario 64 is like riding a bike. And before I knew it, I was done and on to the next game, Super Mario Sunshine. Woo! Gaming. With one of the three games underneath my belt, my wavering confidence from earlier had more than recovered, and 
Moving into the second game, which also happened to be the game I had the majority of my speedrunning experience in, I was certain that I could make it through. However, things didn't quite go as expected. Super Mario Sunshine was the game I was looking forward to playing the most again by far. It was the game that I grew up with, the game that really pushed me as a speedrunner, and the game that many people know me for, even today, years after I stopped grinding it. I've streamed the game for thousands of hours on Twitch and have even more playtime in it offline. Unfortunately for me though, I learned the hard way that my experience with the game would actually come back to haunt me in a pretty major way. After a quick button remapping, the run started fairly normally. The airstrip section went through without a hitch, chat had their fun spamming OBJECTION during the intro cutscene, and we were off to the races. However, while trying to get the very first blue coin of the run, I was reminded of the uphill battle that I was fighting. Oh, that's inverted, okay. You see, while the overhead camera in both Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine were inverted in 3D All-Stars, so was the first-person camera. This doesn't have major consequences in Super Mario 64, but that's not so much the case with Super Mario Sunshine. Without going into great detail, quite a few speedrunning strategies in Sunshine rely on the first-person camera to perform, including Y-turns, glitched wall kicks, and the eel fight. While this might be hard to understand in concept, I think I did a pretty good job of showing the impact of this adjustment during the eel fight I did during this run. Oh no, this is a disaster. Yeah, dude, this first person camera is screwing me. This is so hard. Oh, and I got eaten too. Yeah, this is scuffed. The good news is this will probably be one of my worst uh, eel fights ever, so the good news is we can't- we can't do much worse, right? Silver lining here, we are at- we are at the, uh, the worst possible scenario. So everything you see from here will be better. Give me the- what? Did none of that hit? Are you kidding me? This is a disaster. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was rough, man. That was rough. Not even gonna lie. Nevertheless, these changes were minor in the grand scheme of things. Even with sloppy execution, as long as I knew what I was doing, things wouldn't be all bad, and hey, I did have some bright spots. Even through years of rust and inverted camera controls, we were still able to pull off some pretty cool strats in the first half of the run while actually keeping a pretty decent time. Okay, there we go. That's actually slightly better. I could maybe do this. Good. Mm. Nice, dude. Didn't die. We'll take it. It's a, it's a good time, right? There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Oh, we still got it, boys and girls. All right, time for mole skip. I know we all like moles here, but... Sometimes you gotta skip them. Okay, all right, are you guys ready for the blooperless strat? We're gonna save the bloopers to make up for that other guy, okay? If I can remember how to do it. Oh! Alright, that should be good enough, hopefully. <laughs> Did I hit the checkpoints? Moment of truth! Hey, we got it. We're underwater! Woo! Alright, are you guys ready for this? Watch this, watch this. Oh! It's a fun party trick right there. 
That being said, as we pass the halfway point of the run, things really started to heat up. You see, in Super Mario Sunshine 120 Shine speedruns, the first half of the run is very similar to the any percent route in most cases. There's less of a focus on collecting blue coins and doing extra shines, and instead more of an emphasis on simply unlocking all of the stages and getting to Corona Mountain as quickly as possible to avoid additional cutscenes. This means that the majority of the blue coin collecting and more tedious shines, such as 100 coin shines, are saved for the second half of the run. While this sounds good on paper, it's an absolute nightmare for someone who hasn't touched the game in a while. On my very first stage after reaching the halfway point, Gelato Beach, I was very rudely awakened to the fact that my memory of the game wasn't nearly as good as I thought it was. I, my, my brain tells me I'm supposed to have the rocket nozzle though. I don't remember what I, I don't remember what I missed to be honest. Oh right, I don't have the rocket nozzle yet. That's so bizarre. Oh, I, it's this, right? Oh yeah, no, I do have, wait, what is happening? Yo, I'm freaking out, dude. Is it always like that? I don't know what the heck is going on. I'm losing my mind. Like, I- I'm trying to remember what I'm supposed to do here. I'm trying to remember, dude. I don't remember- I don't remember what it is. I actually have no idea. Dude, I am- I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty- I'm pretty hacked right now. This is like, super scuffed. This is like when, uh, you know how something breaks? And you don't want to just, like, pay to get a new one? So you just like duct tape it and it like mostly works, but you know, it's just like mere seconds from falling apart That's where we're at right now, but I need to get one singular coin <laughs> Hey, anybody got a free coin around here? Hey, uh, can you spare a guy at some change, eh? All right, this is like the easiest secret Okay, you know what? I'm just not gonna talk anymore. I take it back After stumbling my way through the majority of each level, I was left scratching my head Somehow I wasn't just one or two blue coins short of what I needed to be, but instead four. While missing an item isn't super great during a speedrun in the first place, it's especially bad in Super Mario Sunshine. This is because in SMS, certain blue coins are only accessible on certain stages within each level. This meant that not only did I have to check each individual coin location, but also check across multiple stages, which turned out to be a real headache. Dude, I'm trying to remember where all these are at, dude. I'm definitely... Oh, right, I forgot about that guy. <laughs> Alright, that's one down. We are doing this on file B. Not the bees! Oh wait, did, did I? Oh, I thought I got this one. Okay, there you go. I only got one. I only got one to go. These were the four Yoshis, which means I lost the other one somewhere else. Oh. <laughs> hey, what's up, dude? <laughs> okay, got that taken care of. Leaving Gelato Beach and looking ahead to the rest of the run, I was very concerned about the longevity of the 360. Some of those same thoughts I originally had when leaving Shifting Sandland in Super Mario 64 were returning to my brain again, even stronger this time around. If the game I had the most confidence in is taking me this long, how was I ever going to make it through the longest game in the collection before my body demanded I stop and rest? My mind was willing, but I knew I was at an extreme disadvantage, growing with every second that passed. It really was a race against the clock at this point. Okay, and then... Come over here, and then we come over here. Dude. This is very nostalgic though, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's uh, nostalgic for me, even if it's been a painful experience. <laughs> Doesn't play the one-up noise like the Japanese version does. That one-up be hidden different. Okay, all right, we gotta finish the game now. Let's do it. After many hours of struggling, several blue coins forgotten, many 100 coin roots scuffed, and a time that was nearly double my original personal best, we hobbled on towards the final game in the collection, Super Mario Galaxy. Final one, get ready on the split. Woo. 
There was no doubt in my mind that Super Mario Galaxy was the game that I was the most afraid of in this run. Even when played optimally, Super Mario Galaxy is still many hours slower than the other two games in the collection, with the world record for 120 stars sitting at just under 5 hours and 30 minutes. It also happened to be the game I had the least experience in. I had learned the 80% route for the game many years ago and did a handful of runs, but had never done a full 120 star run before, having barely touched many of the additional stars outside of individual level practice. Because of this, my knowledge of the game was much more limited and my routing hazy at best. This forced me to have a huge reliance on my splits to keep me on track. They helped to make sure I was collecting the right amount of star bits and entering into stages in the correct order. I knew that if I was going to make it through Galaxy and complete the full 360 star run, I needed these splits to survive. I mean, just look at what happened when I got even the slightest bit off track. Oh! Oh god. I've hacked it, dude. I'm trying to get to rolling green. And I've hacked it in the process, which is unfortunate. Alright, it's in fountain. Dude, 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 new sub split. Open up, ra or wake up, rage fire. We gotta look at the splits, man. Look at the dang splits, son. At first, the run was going well. Very well. While my mind was beginning to show some signs of mental fatigue, the splits helped keep me moving forward and I was pretty reliably making progress, even surpassing my own expectations I had originally set for the game. The sun had long set, it was the dead of night at this point, and I was content just taking each level one at a time as I barreled towards the finish line. Uh, practice my dude! Alright, here we go, very epic split, let's go! All right, we get a little cutscene action here, and I will be gone, actually, just temporarily. I'm gonna go, uh, I think get some water, maybe a little bit of caffeine for the final stretch here, and then, um, also, go to the bathroom. So I'll be right back. There you go. However, shortly after returning to my desk, refreshed and ready to power on into the finale of the run, I was hit with my final curveball. The Splits Disaster. Remember those clips from earlier? You know. Look at the dang split, son! Well, as it turns out, while I was struggling to find the next level then, I was doing more than just losing time. In the midst of my stumbling around, I managed to shift the comet cycle my run was on, which proved to have pretty major consequences. So, you might be asking yourself, what are comet cycles? Why does any of this even matter? In Super Mario Galaxy, occasionally you'll be notified that a prankster comet is active on a certain level. These prankster comets change the behavior of the level and allow for the player to obtain a special star that is only available on that stage when the prankster comet is active. However, contrary to popular belief, these comets are not completely random and actually follow particular comet cycles that determine when each prankster comet is active on each level. In fact, they're so particular and precise in how they function that members of the Galaxy speedrunning community have written multiple documents on how they function including testing hundreds of patterns, creating their own notation to represent their findings, explaining every potential scenario in which it could be possible to change the behavior of a given comet cycle, and much, much more. To put it simply, these guys were complicated. So, what does all of this mean? By accidentally shifting my comet cycles, I managed to throw off my route entirely with little to no chance of recovering it. This meant that I no longer knew how many star bits I needed to collect on each stage, or what order to even do the stages in. To say that this was crushing would be an understatement. Yeah, dude. My comets are off now, which is not great. If we're being real. Actually, that's like worst case scenario. Because that means I don't actually know where I'm supposed to go at this point, which means the whole rest of the splits are probably screwed. I'll still be able to finish the game, but... Everything will be scuffed at this point. However, I couldn't give up after getting this close to finishing, and we were in the final portion of the run, so I fought off the ever-increasing exhaustion and pushed forward as best as I could. After a few stars of no root, I realized that any progress was good progress and my mind began simplifying the task at hand. By focusing on one star at a time, I was able to slowly chip away at the final 60 stars. The hours went on and the sun continued to rise, but I refused to give up. 
At one point, I was so tired, I went into the library, a section of the game with no levels, while trying to find the next star, and ended up having to sit through nearly five minutes of totally unnecessary cutscenes just because I got lost in the hub area. Oh no, wait, crap. No, no, I don't need this cutscene. Went into the wrong place. Well, we're getting a story, I guess. We're gonna call this, uh, tactical RNG manipulation. How many chapters did she put in her dang book? Who wrote this? J.R.R. Tolkien? Is this Lord of the Rings? This is what happens when you go off the rails, dude. When the splits go to crap, this is what it- We end up in the library. When you go off the rails, you stop paying attention to the splits, you end up in the library. I think there's like 10 chapters. Final chapter, thank God! Literally like five minutes in here. Great story, fantastic, loved it. Okay, well, thanks for that. There was one small catch to my new, routeless approach to the run, though. By taking each star one at a time with no regards to optimal routing, I ended up doing a lot of the stars in order. This meant that as I got further into the run, a lot of the much more mentally and technically demanding stars, such as the Purple Coin Comets and the Daredevil Comets, were saved for when I was even more tired. A combination that, as it turns out, doesn't work too well together. As you can see by the following clips, the results were less than spectacular. Oh, that guy's there, isn't he? Don't die. Oh, you jinxed it, dude. Why'd you jinx it? Nut, 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 nut. Thanks. Thanks for the wisdom there, Mr. Toad. Oh, crap. I do need to get a few coins. I might be dead. Which would be very sad. Oh, I don't think I am. Oh, yeah, I am. Never mind. We gotta go again. That is an awkward angle. I don't like that one. Don't like that very much. Hey, guys. What's up? Oh! Whoa! Whoa! A little bit later on, I spent over five minutes just trying to find three purple coins because my brain couldn't possibly recall it from memory at that point. To say things were going rough would be definitely an understatement. Just gotta find where these guys are and then we'll be done, skis. The heckin' purple coins, man. They're the bane of my existence. What are you talking about, game? Dude, are they- if they're in the crates, I'm gonna be sad. Why would- why would they do that to me, man? Dancing Toad. Give me the secrets. Tell me the- tell me the secrets. He knows, dude. He knows where they are, and he doesn't want me to know. He's hoarding the coins for himself. Why are- why- why are these coins the way they are? Actually... Genuinely a little lost on this. It's like the... This is the first time that I've been genuinely bamboozled. God, this is just painful. Oh, okay, got it. They were under here. <sighs> Why do we exist on this war on this land just to suffer? Okay, 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 we got this. I'm getting deep, dude. It's... We've been awake for too long. Finally, after nearly 12 hours, many deaths, and one mental breakdown later, we had collected all 120 stars, and there was only one thing left to do. The final fight. Time to go to the center of the universe. Let's do it. Am I gonna die on the Bowser, uh, stage again? I can skip all this, let's go. Now, now. Okay, here we go. Let's go, people. No chokes. We gotta finish strong here, alright? At this point, I had been awake for well over 24 hours, and I could feel my brain and body at the brink of exhaustion. I was eerily silent when navigating my way through the Bowser stage. Things were going okay at first, but about halfway through, things took a turn for the worse. I died. I, I died again. I died a third time. Surely it wasn't going to end here, was it? 
After taking a deep breath and clearing my head, I made my way through the level a fourth time before finally reaching the very final Bowser fight. At this point, there was only a minute or two of gameplay left. If I could only just focus and hold on a little bit longer. Is this it? This might be it. We'll see. Okay. We just gotta get the star and then it's done. Now I just need my power to not go off in the next, like, minute. That would be good. <sighs> Jesus, dude. Galaxy kicked my butt. Actually, they all kicked my butt. Inverted camera kicked my butt, dude. Everything did. It was a, it was a nightmare. But we made it through. Okay. Dude, that's how you do three the three D All Stars, one twenty star in each game in one day, in twenty one hours and forty seven minutes to be exact. We might have gotten hacked by the inverted camera. Maybe I forgot the blue coins in a few places. We might have struggled with the galaxy movement. But we finished it, people! We got the job done. After 21 hours, 47 minutes, and 28 seconds, I had done it. All 360 stars in Super Mario 3D All-Stars in under 24 hours on launch day. There were many twists and turns and moments where I felt it was nearly impossible to continue, but somehow, through everything, I persevered and made it through. If you enjoyed this type of content, please consider subscribing. I've recently fallen in love with challenge runs and games, and I plan to do much more of this content in the future. Also, feel free to drop by the stream and say hi where I do all of this stuff live, if that's your thing too. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.